What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am going to be watching episode 4 of Star Trek Picard today. I've literally just gotten done reacting to episode 3 so I'm absolutely pumped. I'm not gonna say anything but I can't wait to get into the episode so with that being said let's get straight into it. Here we go. Had to jump straight into this one. I don't want to waste any time. I want to know what's gonna happen, what's going on. The tension between Will and Picard at the moment is crazy high. He kicked him off the bridge five years ago. Okay, so we're starting with flashback. Sir, I'm sorry, but your book just talks about the diplomatic situation, but we heard the Alpha actually hunted you. We'd love to hear it from the man himself. Well. Fortunately for me, Lieutenant Commander War. I'm not really one for telling stories, immediately jumps into telling the story. You know, no matter how bleak a situation, as long as you remain steadfast in your dedication one to another, you are never without hope. Oh. I love these flashback scenes and how they. They translate to the present day. Ooh! The more systems we use, the faster it depletes. We're bleeding to death. We're sinking. All systems are reaching critical minimums. If we pull any more power from our engines, there will be zero chance we can fly out of here. Divert as much power as you can to life support. Captain! Whoa, what's this? Connor, well, an apology tonight. I'm saying this to you as a courtesy. Out of line. Stop. We estimate about four hours until the ship is crushed by the gravity well. You were right before. Oh? I didn't see this coming. When we buried our son, it was like infinite emptiness. There's nothing, nothing that proved to be that there is anything after. Deanna couldn't live with with me feeling nothing, and neither could I, which is why I left. I was running from this, only to find it again. I'd take the next few hours to get to know your son. Yeah, knew he was gonna say that. I'm so sorry, jean -Luc. Yeah, you could tell that it was emotion that was driving the tension in the previous episode. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Yep, and this is what I was talking about. It can make people very suspicious. It creates this distrust, this feeling of unease that, you know, this changing could be anywhere. Could be anybody. I thought it was Will. The Changeling Saboteur killed our transporter officer. We have got to keep this quiet. There is a saboteur on this ship. I'm not saying do nothing. I'm saying keep it quiet. He's right. You remaining in an unofficial capacity could work to our advantage. Go get the bastard. <laughs> yes. Three, two, one. That wasn't an asteroid. Beverly, do you think you could give me a moment with Jack? Of course I could. The smile on her face. I love Beverly Crusher. Don't come. Don't come. Don't come. <laughs> love the view. <laughs> There's a changeling on board. That's what kept us from warping away. It's been on the ship since before we picked up Dr. Crusher and her son. And as much as it pains me, nobody knows this ship better than you. I want to record a private message. This is going to be sad. This is going to be very sad. Deanna, 
I want you to know. Holodeck program 10 forward. Oh, the holodeck. Oh, I don't know why I didn't think we'd get to see too much holodeck action. Holodeck still open. It relies on a small independent power cell so that in times of distress, it can be kind of sanctuary. Everyone crams in here while the ship implodes around them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'd rather die in the holodeck than, than anywhere else, you know? You could technically program it to take you to Hawaii. Wouldn't that be nice? The hair. When did it go? <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. <laughs> You know, Jack, I would love to know more about you. Perhaps you might tell me the reason you decided not to know me. <laughs> Too Very forward of you. Oh, the fidgeting. Good touch. Ask him a question that they should know the answer to. Wrong answer. Changeling. Look, you and I got off on the wrong foot. I underestimated you. Make a great captain one day. Just something I totally would say. If you were a changeling and not just a dick. <laughs> 500 people, it's gonna be tough to snuff out this asshole alone. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Get them to come to you. Steal their pot. I'm assuming you're not referring to cannabis. Sadly, no. <laughs> it's hard for changelings to maintain their false form. They have to rest in a, in a, in a, in a pot, a vase. They leap behind like a was that Odo? Thank you, Captain. Whatever. <laughs> I like sure a lot more now. Ooh. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking sure a lot more now. That ship! Still so cool. See, I want to know more about Vardik. Whoa. The starship couldn't escape the center of the gravity well. Assume it is suicide to refuse. All else is expendable. Damn. I will pursue. This is Portal system. That was unexpected. I realized I heard mention once of an incident with Jack Crusher. A no win scenario. Sir, is this private? Any way you like. I get that you might think that I need this. Some people need to be a part of something, others don't. I grew up mostly on my own. That's who I am. So if you think that this is about a moment that I need. I think maybe I do. I wonder about that. I do think he does need it. That's the changeling? There's two of them? Ugh. <laughs> I need help on deck five. An officer's been killed. And things are about to get a lot worse. What's the worst jam you've ever been in? One involves your namesake. Oh, I always wondered about that. Name me after her first husband? Truth be told, I would have named you the same. He and I were on leave. We met these two delightful young women. Oh, were they delightful? <laughs> I had hatched a plan to borrow a shuttle return to our galley to get laid. On our way back, a micrometeoroid shower wrecked us. We couldn't contact the ship. We were dead in the water. We improvised a system, and we inched our way home. Ten fucking grueling hours. <gasps> Picard cussing! Whoa! What a harrowing tale. Speaking of harrowing stories, did your old man ever tell you about the time that he and I first met? Oh? Start A44002.3. You must have heard about the Battle of Wolf 359. Oh... Yeah, I was just an engineering in the next second. The cutest. Fifty of us made it down to the life deck. It was just one life pod. The thing is, they were all my Jack Crusher. We, we waited for orders. 
some lieutenant comes down. She's pointing at me. What? Why me? This is haunting. I'm just some dipshit from Chicago. I'm sorry. 11,000 dead. The screaming in the background. <sighs> Do you know where your old man was? Of Borg. Oh. Oof. Locutus of Borg. All right, that's enough. No. Oh. Jack's standing up for him. It's all right. This scene. I understand. <sighs> Nandi was so angry. And he mentioned the Borg in that first, in episode one. I wondered why he went to that. Forgive me. At some point, asshole became a substitute for charm. At least he's self-aware. He understands that he doesn't go about it in the best way. It is based on trauma. It's like it's understandable. It's building and building and it's going to crescendo. This this gravity well we're in. It's a countdown. We need to be out of here as soon as possible. If we knew when those waves were coming, maybe we could plug into them. We could hitch a ride out of there. Some family thinking. If we fly fast enough, we'll match the speed with the wave. We hightail it out the nebula, away from our new friends, the space babies. Jack. <laughs> this is insane. We need to fire thrusters, which will drain life support in minutes. What about the asteroid field? Navigate manually, like you did. This is not a two-man shuttle. Starfleet protocol states, wait to be ready. We wait. And we die here of suffocation. A hundred things could go wrong. Deanna would say it's about trust. Let's do what we spent our entire lives learning to be great at. All of them together. In this scene. Let's face it together. Doing what we know we do best. Damn straight. Damn straight. We might be able to channel the energy right down to the warp core. All right, everybody, and let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's so much I want to say after this episode. My review is going to be a little long for this one. Crew of the USS Titan. We're going to use these energy waves. I'm not going to lie, it's a hell of a risk. Anything goes wrong, we'll all know pretty quick. I know many of you don't know me. I'm only as effective as you are. We all hang tight and work together. We're gonna get through this. I need your help, despite the fact that you are indeed a dipshit from Chicago. <laughs> nice. It's very nice. The inner workings of the nacelle shields is over 20 years old. None of these kids know how to hotwire it, so. Give me five and meet me at nacelle control. Nacelle control is exposed. Oh, what about the changeling? That changeling really wanted to screw us. Best place to do it would be right here, right now. That's what I was saying. Oh, my predictions are on point this episode. A few more minutes to get these covers open. Captain, you've got two minutes. Admiral, you have the con. The way that music swells up. <laughs> From LaForge, bring us about 225, Mark 16. He's where he's supposed to be. Engage! Record <laughs> 7, get those cell covers open. Oh, that changeling. It's gotta show up at some point. There we go. Sir, I heard you could use a hand. Nope. Mm-mm. Shoot her. Yep. Turn. Around. Commander, it's me. Commander what, Forge? Commander Hanson. Yep. Oh. The way that came back. Hanson, the Forge always calls me Commander Seven. <laughs> Open for business. Okay, we've taken care of the changeling, so now it's just, are we going to be able to ride these energy waves? Oh no. Asteroid field. Jack, call out their positions. It's bearing 224, mark 5. Oh. 
That's John Luke Picard for you. Hold on. Trust me. <laughs> like father, like son. Transfer all power from life support. Life support is offline. Now, if that's not some risk. Is offline. I don't know what is. Okay. Seven. Well, Beverly. Six. It's all on you now. Look at that visual. Forge, gun it. Stay inside. Drive coming back online in 90 seconds. Contact the Shrike. Oh, what's your plan? You're gonna drag them? Oh. Cut the beam. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> Will, did you just throw an asteroid? Goddamn right I did. <laughs> what are they looking at? Oh, how cool. Just like Farpoint. To seek out new life. I think we should boldly get the hell out of here. <laughs> and some LaForge. Hey, Captain. <laughs> Your crew become a part of you. They lift you up. And now, if you don't mind, I think my haddock's getting cold. <laughs> you went on and on about your life in Starfleet. Did you have a life outside of that? Oh. A real family. So he did go and try and meet him. Starfleet has been the only family I have ever needed. Oh, that's why. I thought being away was going to be the answer to all of our problems. I'm just glad that everyone's okay. Diana, that is so good to see her. Are you and Jean-Luc in trouble? I don't know yet. Admiral's log. We get a log. Too many questions linger. Who is this Vadic? What exactly does she want with my son? Oh. Yeah, there's something very wrong with him. <sighs> okay, so a couple of things I did want to talk about. I noticed Beverly smiling whenever Picard and Jack had a significant interaction. And I think that, that really does say quite a lot about how she did want him to have a connection with his father. It's just that, that scene at the end when Picard says that Starfleet's the only family that he ever needed must have really kind of stumped Jack. And he left immediately after that, so I assume that's what stopped him from pursuing that connection with his father. Very sad, but I can understand why he did it. I think in this episode there are a lot of actions and feelings that are understandable some that are understandable but the resultant action or the resultant behavior i should say afterwards is not warranted i think with sure the issue there is it's understandable why he feels the way he feels but being an asshole like he said instead of being charming and chivalrous is not the way to go about it it's understandable that he's affected by what happened to him the man had pretty much his entire crew from what it sounds like die all those screams that was such a haunting hauntingly beautiful scene the screams right as he's describing the battle it was spectacularly well done I think haunting is the best word to describe it because it's almost like ghosts of the past are still haunting sure i had a great time with this i think what these last few episodes have done very well is they have the flashback at the beginning that kind of translates and correlates to the events that are happening in the episode i think that's really cool with this one you had picard's speech at the very beginning with the last one we had will talking to picard about the birth of his son and how that kind of translated to what Picard went through later on in the episode. I like that with this one, not only did it translate to what was going on in the episode in present day, but it also had a little payoff at the end where we had a reveal that Jack was there the entire time. 
And I think that's really cool how it's tied into both the present and the present kind of tied into the past. And they, they kind of used each other. The kind of clever, cool little things that they're going to do with the rest of the episodes. We got Diana. That was really cool. I wish that we got a little bit more Worf, but I assume that we're going to get more of him next episode. And possibly Geordi. Now that we're out of the nebula, who knows? We might very well get to see some Geordi. I can't wait till they're all in one room because just the interactions between them all in this episode were... I think that was my favourite part of the episode, was that interaction between all of them when Picard, Jack and Beverly were trying to convince Will to use themselves to absorb the energy. That was really cool. I'm just enjoying the show in general so far. There are about 99% of you at the moment who aren't subscribed. Every little bit helps, so if you guys want to see more of this content going forwards, please do smash that subscribe button. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. To the next one, bye bye for now.